Hello, this is Robert Polenik, the owner of Brutal Iron Gym. I'm here for another video in the Ask Rob video series. So today's question came from a member who had asked me uh, about their deadlift. They said that they've been uh, deadlifting for the past couple of weeks, everything kind of just seems stagnant, they've really hit a plateau, and they were trying to figure out what they could do differently in order to uh, kind of improve upon their deadlift. And what I did was the gym, and I gave them kind of a quick answer, and then I decided to come back and make this video to talk about just uh, just general plateaus. So when you reach a plateau in your training, whether it's a specific lift, so in this case it's a deadlift, but maybe you know you got kind of stagnant with your squat, your bench press, maybe some other lifts as well, or maybe you just see in a plateau in the way your physique is changing. So uh, what I told the member about the deadlift was I told him uh, a very easy answer was uh, how to uh, make improvements would simply do something different than what you're currently doing. So I told him if he'd been coming into the gym and really hitting like a max effort set uh, for like real low, low reps, like maybe he's been coming into the gym and doing the best he could for five reps, best he could for three reps or something every single time he comes in the gym, week after week after week, you know, the body's kind of going to get used to that stimulus, so it get beat down from that stimulus as well, and it kind of just kind of hits this plateau because there's not enough variety, there's not enough change. So you kind of have to challenge the body in order to make it get a little bit better, but you also have to challenge it in a way that it can uh, meet and accomplish those challenges. So by coming in and just hitting the one rep max over and over and over again, it doesn't really give you a way to build strength. So one rep max is more like trying to display your strength, you know, you kind of, kind of see what you can do. Uh, one rep maxes don't really help with increasing uh, that one rep max. It sounds odd to say that, but if I just come in and say my one rep max on, be is on bench press is 315, if I come into the gym and try to hit 315 week after week after week after week, that's not really going to be a good approach to uh, making progress. Whereas maybe if I come in one week doing the best I can for a set of 10, the next week I come in and do the best I can for a set of like 5, maybe the following workout, the, the week number 3, do the best I can for a set of 3s, then when I come back to those sets of one, maybe in the fourth week, so like, like, like a month later, I'll be able to actually increase my max simply because I took the time to build my strength. So instead of sitting at, at uh, just repeating one rep maxes, one rep maxes over and over, if I go back to a little bit of lower reps, a little bit lower weight, and uh, give my body a chance to challenge itself through some more repetitions, that's a good way to build strength. So and that brings me to kind of the first aspect of when you're trying to figure out why you hit a plateau or how to push yourself past the plateau is looking at the physical. So look at what you're actually doing in your workouts or what the big thing that people don't talk about is nutrition. How are you eating? So if we look at the, our workouts or exercises first in terms of the physical aspect, you want to think about what you're doing, what approach you're taking. So if I'm coming into the gym and I'm doing sets of you know threes all the time, is that really the best way to challenge my body? Is that the best way to make progress. So you want to make sure what you're doing physically actually has some kind of approach or some type of methodology, methodology to it. So like I said, you can kind of do waves where uh, you decrease, you change your repetitions. So like I said, you can come in and do a week of tens, a week of five, a week of three, then back to single, and that will help increase your strength. So you just want to have some type of, um, trying to think how to word it, is um, some type of increasing program. So to where you work to a peak and then you kind of back off a little bit, not in terms of intensity. You still want to keep your intensity high, but like I said, you back off on the singles. So don't always come into the gym and just do one rep, okay? Yeah, sometimes backing off doing sets of fives will also still build strength. It gives you more time under tension, more time under the weight, and that gives your body uh, and your muscles more time to feel that stimulus, maybe create some more muscle damage and then you'll get more adaptation to that increased muscle damage rather than the time and attention for just a single rep. So looking at physically what you're doing makes a big difference as well. And then also when it comes to nutrition, so like maybe if a person's stagnant in their weightlifting uh, in terms of their strength, but you know if you look over the past couple of days they haven't eaten as well, you know maybe the past couple of weeks they've been stressed out at work, maybe they have a new baby, maybe they're moving to a new house, some things have changed in their life, the food hasn't been consistent, or maybe it's actually going backwards. So obviously, uh, well hopefully it's obvious, but nutrition plays a big part in terms of strength. 
So you want to make sure you're eating enough calories and enough protein to make sure your body can actually adjust to your training plans and can make the adaptations necessary to increase strength. So that's kind of the physical aspect of it, is looking at what you're actually doing in the gym, the program you're using, and what you're eating. So we have that physical aspect, and also there's um, kind of like a technical aspect to everything. So if you go to the gym and your plan says to do, you know, five sets of threes on deadlift, and then you move to, say, bent over rows, maybe you do like reverse hyperextension, maybe some regular hyperextension, you kind of have a program to follow. Now you want to kind of look at the technical aspect is the quality of what you're doing. So if you're doing deadlifts, are you doing it perfectly? Or are you doing the actual correct form? So same thing for squats, for bench press, even down to like bicep curls and tricep kickbacks. So some of my clients I've made, uh, I've actually showed them how to properly do a tricep kickback and they uh, probably hate me for that. But what it does, it shows them that if you eliminate all momentum, you keep the focus on the actual tricep, you can't really move a lot of weight when you're doing the exercise in the proper fashion. So I'll have somebody comes in, they might be using 15 or 20 pound dumbbells to do tricep kickbacks, and, but the whole time they're swinging, they're dropping their elbow, they're going uh, you know, past perpendicular with their forearms, so they're engaging a lot of biceps in each motion. So when we correct their form, they might be down to using just five pound dumbbells or eight pound dumbbells, but they'll actually get better results because they've improved their technique. So then, like I said about the technical aspect, is you want to make sure you're taking the time to evaluate and correct your form. So um, there's plenty, plenty, plenty of examples of this, I'm sure with strength coaches uh, around the country, to where they'll have someone come into the gym, they say that their current max is say 300 pounds on the lift, you go through, you teach them the right form, you do a proper warm-up, and all of a sudden before they leave the gym, they're at 3, 315, 320, you know, maybe even 330. So it's not uncommon for when someone comes into the gym, if I take, down, take them through and kind of break down their form, correct any little issues, we can easily get a 5, up, maybe even up to a 10% increase on their one rep max, simply because of making sure things are more technical, making sure the form is actually correct. So that's one aspect is you want to make sure that what you're doing, you're actually doing it correctly. So I was training a client recently and we were talking about doing chest flies and um, I showed him the form to use that, that I like to use for chest flies, which is extremely strict. It involves a lot of contraction and control through the motion. And what he found was that just by doing two or three sets with a moderate weight, his chest was absolutely fatigued. He was beat up. He was done. And it was actually less work than what he was used to doing. So what we talked about is the chest fly is not always a chest fly. So a chest press is not always a chest press. So you have person A that might be doing the exercise, the same exercise as person B, but maybe person A is using horrible form, person B is using great form, and person B is going to make more progress. So if you looked at both of their programs, they're both doing the same stuff, but it's the quality of what they're doing that's more important than what they're actually doing. So you want to make sure you look at the technical aspect of your lifts. So when it comes to nutrition, there's still the technical aspect to that as well. So a lot of times when people come to me, they might be saying, oh, I eat healthy, but when we break down their diet, they're having a lot of sugars through dairy products. So maybe they're drinking uh, milk you know, a couple times a day, they might be having yogurt a couple times a day. So if you look through it, there's a lot more hidden sugars and a lot more hidden carbs than what they realize. So again, they might say they're following a certain program, in this case a nutrition plan, but if you really look at the technical breakdown of it and you look at all the individual details, they realize they're not doing things quite the way they thought they were. So um, oftentimes I'll give people nutrition plans and I'll tell them like basically it's a structure they can follow. They follow it for a week, they tell me they're doing really good, but then they send me their food journal from that, that first week and you find out they've missed a few meals here or there. At one meal they're supposed to have protein and fat, but they just had the fat item, they didn't have the protein item, or vice versa. Maybe they decided to snack a little bit one night, you know. And when you ask them in person, you'll ask them what they did in terms of the results or like uh, in terms of their actions. And usually they all account for the good stuff and they kind of forget about the bad stuff. So by keeping a food journal, it keeps them a lot more honest and it allows me to kind of see the patterns that they fall into if they're kind of being inconsistent between their meals. So maybe for breakfast, one day they're having a big breakfast, the next day they're having a quick breakfast, you know, the next day they didn't even have a breakfast, that kind of thing. So you want to look at the technical aspect both in your exercise and your training and also in your nutrition. So again, we have the physical aspect of what you're doing, 
the technical aspect of how well you're doing it, and then finally there's kind of a mental component. So um, a lot of times people will reach plateaus when they get to uh, certain weights in a lift. So for example, in bench press, somebody will plateau around 225 because they have two big 45 pound plates on each side of the bar, so that might be intimidating for them and they all of a sudden think it's really heavy, so that kind of gets in their mind. And uh, for them to progress past 225 is a, more of a mental trick rather than a physical trick. So I've actually seen this with clients where when we get to a certain weight, so maybe it's 315 on bench press, maybe it's 405 on squats, but what they'll see is they'll see a certain number of plates per side and they automatically equate that to being heavy. So what they'll do is they'll see, like say, four plates on each side of the bar and it automatically triggers in their mind, oh crap, this weight is going to be very heavy. So they start, they start to get very hesitant when they go approach the lift and usually they'll fail the lift. It's actually more so due to mental rather than physical. So uh, oftentimes what I'll do to people is I'll uh, put weights on the, plate, on the bar that actually don't make sense. So you might have a 45 on there first, then a 25, then a 10, then another like 25, then two fives, then a 10. So it just looks ridiculous if you look at the bar. But at the same time, uh, they can't really do the math in their head. So we end up working up to a weight heavier than what they thought they were at and they actually don't realize it because it doesn't have that fear factor of when they see the certain number of plates per side. So a lot of times the mental approach is the big key to trying to break a plateau. So you want to try to, it's really hard to trick yourself mentally, but you want to try it anyhow. You know, if like let's say you're afraid of three plates on the bar or bench pressing, that's fine. Just put on some 25s, put on some 10s one day, kind of work your way up a little bit as you go, but avoid using the 45s. So you might end up with three or four 25s on one side, a couple fives, a couple tens, but before you know it, you'll pass 315, you might even be up to 320, 325, and then when you do the math, you'll realize you're actually at a heavier weight than what you thought. So like I said, those tricks work really well as a personal trainer because the person's usually just doing whatever you tell them anyhow, so you just tell them the weight, you throw on some stuff here and there, and then before they know it, they're already at a heavier weight. So again, when it comes to trying to break a plateau, you want to look at the physical aspect, you want to look at the technical aspect and the mental aspect of what you're doing. So those are kind of the three big components that you want to kind of evaluate, look back through, make sure everything's on par with what you think it's supposed to be. So, and then also make sure you're always trying to progress. So that's one big thing is if you're in the gym and like let's say you're trying to get better than a 405 deadlift, don't keep trying a 405 deadlift. You know, like I said, go back, try some lighter weights, work on technical form, try some even different exercises, maybe even don't do deadlifts for a whole month. So there's a lot of variations to deadlifts. You can do some Romanian deadlifts, step leg deadlifts, you can do snatch grip deadlifts, you can do deadlifts off of a deficit or off an elevated platform. So you just try to stay away from a regular deadlift for simply a month and that might help boost you over a plateau. So again, that's kind of the things you want to look at is all those different aspects. So just to annoy you a little more, I'll review them one more time, is uh, physical, technical, and mental. So look at those three aspects and I'm sure you'll find something that you can do to improve upon your current program and then that'll help you push you past your plateaus. So hopefully this video helped and uh, we'll have more in the future. Thank you.